Don. Sorry. Oh, now we're recording. Um, and Don's had such a fantastic um, journey with Dr. Chen and Sunrider since the very beginning. And he's just a, a really warm. Um, I've known Don now for my 35 years in Sunrider. And I have to say, um, there are two people in Sunrider that if they spoke, I never missed. And one was Dr. Tefu Chen and the other one was Don Castor. He's like a wealth of knowledge. He has lots to share. So if you got a paper and pencil, you might want to make notes. Um, and I want to give the whole time to Don. And uh, then, you know, we don't miss anything. So without any further ado, please help me welcome our friend in Sunrider, Don Castor. Welcome, Don. Thank you, Cheryl. It was a very special uh, introduction, and I'm not sure I'm worthy of it, but uh, yes, we've spent a lot of time together, you and I, and I think uh, you're a very formidable part about the history of this company and the growth of this company, and, and people have to acknowledge all the great things you've done for all of your lines. So if I can be of any assistance to anybody this evening, I'm glad to do that. And I do believe I understand we have to be off in 55 minutes. Is that correct? You have another call in one hour. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Then I'll I'll keep it as brief as I can and still try to cover some areas. I think um, I can see many faces on this call and a lot of you I've met, a lot of you I've worked with. I've been in a lot of your cities over the years when Dr. Chin gave me the opportunity to travel when he was so busy <clears throat> that I got a chance to meet a number of people. My experience in Sunrider, um, like a lot of yours, was really started by Dr. Chin himself. When I first got involved in network marketing, I was 23 years old and was just had graduated from college and started teaching school and was looking for a way to make a little extra money to be able to afford my master's and PhD program to go into education. I saw myself being an educator my entire life. And so after my initial work, um, in this field, I joined a company that uh, I lasted about a week in and then got kind of bit by the, the whole concept of network marketing. And back in 1973, when I did that, there were about six, seven companies out there to speak of. There really wasn't anybody. It was a, an emerging business, if you will. A couple of those companies are still around today. And from that experience, uh, I stayed with that company till about 1976, when I had the opportunity to meet um, my upline in that company who introduced me to an upline I had never met before. And that's what got me involved in the in the herb business and uh, started in the herbs in 76. Had an opportunity to travel for two or three years with a man named Dr. John Christopher, who was a delightful speaker and a wonderful person. And this particular company purported his products and gave us an understanding of what herbs were by the Western mind. So I was pretty confident about the 70 or 80 herbs I knew and what plants could do. And it was fascinating because the business I was working in before while I was still teaching was all vitamins and, and, and minerals and protein powders and, you know, what I called simple mundane things at the time. And I got involved in herbs and it was intriguing. And from that point, I basically ended up leaving teaching uh, 1977 because the, the business was going well. But it was fortunate for me that I did because I was able to meet um, a gentleman who owned this other company that I was introduced to that got me into the herbs and talked me into trying to spend more time with it. And I did. And it was about the late 1978. I met this Chinese fella who uh, really was still working out his English. And I have to tell you, in 1978, it needed work. A lot of people think it still needs work in 2023, but I'm not going to make that comment, nor will I ever say I did say it. But it was an opportunity to talk to him because the owner of the company was unsure what he really knew because he could never understand him. Well, Chin's knowledge of the plant kingdom blew me away because it wasn't 50 or 60 or 70 plants like the Western culture knew. It wasn't like the even the European culture that might have known 100. The Oriental culture was aware of thousands because their entire culture, their medicine, their growth, their philosophy was all based upon this whole concept of balance and how the body, when you feed it correctly, works correctly, which isn't what we were saying at the time. The idea of whole foods and, and the completeness of a food didn't exist in the market. Well, about the time I started getting to know what this herb business was about, 
couple things tragically changed my life. My mother died of cancer in 70, in 1976 by malnutrition. And I began to study what it meant to die of malnutrition. I had no idea. I was an English teacher. What did I know? And I began to learn a little bit about the human body, not much, and began to have a, an inquisitive nature and began to read and I'd go out and talk to groups. And nobody was selling anything except maybe some vitamins. Health food stores were 400 square feet and had really bad packaging and organic wasn't heard of at the time. Uh, Whole Foods was not a concept. Um, the polyphenols, anti anti uh, um, products that were not complete nutritional products didn't exist, and the whole concept didn't exist in the late seventies. So from this, I bridged into a small store, quit my teaching job, and began working with this herb company. And then I got to meet Dr. Chen, and I was just amazed at this man's knowledge and the whole Chinese concept. He was the first Chinese person I ever met. I mean, I was from a small town in Ohio, and you know, it was just not cultural from that standpoint. We became intrigued by him. And he began to talk about how he was going to travel the world and teach everybody this information. And that someday everybody was going to know about how herbs and plants really feed the body. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. Here's a guy that's about my size, a um, lot more intelligent than I was, had no money at all. And he's talking about this dream of what he was going to do. And I humored him a lot because he was getting paid by the company and I was asked by the owner to go with him. So there was no other relationship between us, except that he was an employee. And I'd listen to these stories till two, three, four in the morning when we'd be traveling together, because he would go out and speak for this company. And afterwards, I'd kind of interpret for him because he was a little hard to understand. But his knowledge and his information was incredible. His ability to look at a plant, give him a name of any particular plant, and he could break it down chemically just blew me away. So his in-depth knowledge was intriguing. His concept of philosophy was intriguing to me. So when he began talking about what he was going to do when he had his own company, I asked the obvious question about where was he going to get the money? And he said, you don't worry about stuff like that. It'll just come to you if you do it correctly. But then he began to talk about why these products and these formulas he was going to do were going to be totally unique and different. And at the time, nobody in this country was talking Whole Foods, Nobody was talking antioxidants. Nobody was talking any of the other terms that are very common today. So this concepts did not exist. He was a true leader in bringing this whole information forward. He had the, the guidance of Dr. Dean Black, who was a brilliant uh, uh, master of the English language, and he could create words. And that's where the, you know things like Sun Rider came from and some of his terms all came from, from Dean Black's knowledge of the English language. It was Dr. Chen's ability to express it that was like nothing I had ever heard before. I heard salespeople talk before. I never heard passionate people with the kind of knowledge he did. So when Chen talked about what he wanted to do, and I was a little bit into the into the health food business at the time, I said, Chen, man, this product could really do well in the stores. He goes, we're not going to go to stores. He goes, what are you going to do? He goes, we're going to do business like we're doing now, person to person, network marketing. I says, Chen, that's going to take forever. He goes, no, it's the foundation we build that's going to create a product line and a loyalty like nobody's ever seen in this world. And he goes, we're going to do it because we have a product that nobody else has. And here we are in 2023. And that's those exact words that he uttered in 19, about 80, when he started talking about it, are absolutely where we are today. We're having difficulty today without product. We're having difficulty today to get the manufacturing up to speed, but we still have people asking when they're going to get the product. In my 40, what are we going on, 41 years, I guess it would be Sunrider time, we have never experienced an out of stock. We have never experienced a back order until the last year. But when you look at the rest of the industry, whether it be a vitamin industry, an herb industry, a protein industry, the natural food retail business, and now mail order business, and now internet business, if a product's off of the market for more than about four months, which is the case what happened in COVID. A lot of companies disappeared because the loyalty to the product did not disappear. And why? Are we brainwashed? No. The product quality and the effectiveness of the product are there. Why? Because Dr. Chin's philosophies were accurate. They're still accurate today because they're based upon a principle that was developed for thousands of years by the Chinese that Dr. Chin brought to the market place in a way that could be used correctly. And I think that's something that we should be very thankful for, because um, I noticed in the, the retail business, which I'm really not involved in much of anymore, where I still have a couple stores, 
that the business grew for a while during COVID and then dropped because it grew because people were desperate and thought they'd get nothing to be able to eat. Then it dropped because they decided they didn't want to spend the money or so many companies were out of stock. I still have three companies in that business. They're running 60 to 70% out of stock. And it isn't because of anything more than no labor to work in the plants and raw material issues. With Sunrider, because of what Dr. Chin does, we'd never had an out of stock. We never had a back order. We don't have a raw material problem today. If you were to go into the Texas facility, which is probably one of the best moves the company ever made, had mistakes doing it, but getting into that facility, the ability they have to store raw materials puts us with a two-year availability. So if we see a shortage coming up somewhere in a world crop because the crop fails, Dr. Chin is able to, actually the Chin children are doing most of the buying now, are able to keep that raw material storage going. And that's something that everybody else can't do. Now, why is that? The majority of other companies, about 95% of the brands you see on the marketplace, do not make anything. They have someone else package or encapsulate or grind for them. That's the nature of the industry that you go when you go into a grocery store, or you go into a health food store. There's very few companies. As a matter of fact, I can think of just one company, probably two, that make themselves the majority of what they do. Not everything. Nobody makes soft gel capsules. Nobody. That's all done by a third party. It's a nine-month turnaround to get it. And when they run out of a vitamin E or a COQ10 or whatever they sell soft gel, if they run out and they haven't ordered it correctly, you're talking six to nine months to get it in. Why? Because they're dependent upon somebody else to manufacture the product. What Chin always said from day one, when he talked about, I remember his first facility in Provo, Utah, it was a very small facility, and his main product was, was a product called SunCare at the time, which was what we have as, as Sun Nectar today, that became the uh, SunCare derivative later. But when he came up with that particular product, he was making it right there. And he did that because his extraction process of taking stevia, for example, which is a plant, and extracting out the stevia side, which is the nutrient that makes it so effective. When people talk about how stevia is very good for the body and the pancreas because it balances, they're talking about the plant. They're not talking about their product because all other products in the marketplace extract with alcohol. And by doing so, their purpose is to extract the sweetness from the stevia, not the nutritional benefits of, ste of the stevia sides because it has sort of a funny taste and it's a dark color. So Dr. Chin says that's not the purpose. The purpose is to nourish and feed and balance the pancreas because the human body, by eating too many artificial or concentrated sugars like pure sugar, or cane sugar, can throw the body off. We know that organ is a pancreas. It's part of the digestive system. Well, Chin says that's not a problem with stevia. So for years, Dr. Chin tried to bring that product to market and ran into resistance. His first product he came up with was a product called True Sweet. And True Sweet, I had a bottle of it here a minute ago. I'll find it. Um, True Sweet is a product that Dr. Chin came up with. And the purpose of True Sweet, can you believe that I just put that away, is a product that he came up with and it had on the market for about two years and had to remove it because the FDA came in and says, that's a sweetener and you can't sell it. Dr. Chin says, oh, geez, I didn't know. So about a month later, he comes up with a product called Sun Care. And Sun Care was a bottle of, of his extract and Redmond Clay, which you would put the Redmond Clay in your palm of your hand. I remember Dr. Chin doing this, putting four drops of stevia, and he would rub it in his hand, and he would say, now put it on your face, and it's so good for your skin. Now have your wife kiss you, it's good for her. You know, and he was, it's corny jokes. Um, but that product was on the market for a number of years till the government sort of backed off in 1994. And why did they back off? Because Dr. Chin himself, Sunrider's president and owner, Went to the federal government. The, thank you. The U.S. The U.S. government was trying to pass a bill called the Deshay Act, which would allow nutrients to be available in the United States as dietary supplements. But it took a lot of research to get it through. Well, Dr. Chin spent nearly a million dollars to get stevia as a ingredient approved by the U.S. government, and it was accepted because the amount of money, time, and research he put into it. So he started selling it as a nutritional supplement legally. Well, from 1994 till about 1999, other people began to cheat and they came up with it. There was a couple of tea companies that put a little bit in there as an herb, but it was a sweetener. You know, they just literally ground up stevia. 
And today it's widely used in soft drinks. It's used in baking mixes. It's used everywhere. And the government sort of says, well, we're going to take it off the grass list. We're going to make it acceptable. And you could put in food. We're going to ignore you. But it was approved because of Dr. Chin. And there was one major vitamin company out there, which I alluded to earlier, that makes a lot of products. When they first came up with Stevia back mid 1997 to 99, they put right on their box that this was because of the research by Dr. Chen, who developed this when he was in Paraguay and he learned about it and how he brought it to the U.S. He was acknowledged by this large vitamin health food industry as being the man that did it. With our industry, we know him as Dr. Tefu Chen. They knew him as a researcher that was changing the way people thought about food. So the respect, I took him to a show once must have been about 15 years ago, we went to these large conventions that health food stores have. And I mean, we're talking in Anaheim, it was the entire convention center. And we were walking around just to kind of see what was going on. And he must have been stopped by 20 or 25 different of these booths because they knew who he was. And they wanted out just to acknowledge him and say hello to him. Because his reputation, not only as a huge player, but as an innovator in how product was produced, and the amount of product he was generating back in the 90s made him a known entity in the entire world. Our Sunrider world looks at him as this man that got us started. I respect him for giving me the opportunity to be able to change the way I live because I was able to change some people's lives by continuing his information and his story. But the reason it wasn't just a bunch of words is because of his methodology in producing product created products that actually make a difference. They work effectively. That's why there's nothing on the market like Quinery or Assimilate or Concode or Prime Again or, or New Plus. Nothing like that exists. And you can go to individual herbs and find nothing like them. Well, why is that? Well, because if you look at our Chinese golden seal, it's not just golden seal. If you look at a white willow, anything that we sell, it's not just that herb round up, thrown in a capsule like all these other companies do. There are herb companies out there today of some very decent size who do grind and package and encapsulate and bottle their own herbs. No question about it. But that's all they do. Dr. Chen's ability to create the product in such a way and actually create a stable product. By this, I mean he has his own set of standards. There's a certain amount of antioxidant. There's a certain nutrition profile that he has to have in a formula before it's acceptable. That dictates how much he puts into the into what I call the soup, into these big pots, to give him the end product he wants. It isn't just a, a look at it, throw it in, try, hope for the best, which is the case with most herbal products. You don't know the exact amount of active ingredient in just a ground-up herb. If it's standardized, which some, some herb companies are doing now because of what came out of Europe and their ability to standardize product, they concentrate it down so that that herb is, has a certain amount of whatever they want it to have. Kind of acts almost like a medicine. Well, Dr. Chin, knowing again the respect for what the Chinese did and a lot of what he learned by other cultures, the, the Koreans, for example, were very good at determining how ginseng was not just Korean ginseng because the ginseng that Korea would use, whether it was grown in South Korea, North Korea, some other part of the world, the United States, it became Korean ginseng. When in Korea, they would they would create this, we'll use my term soup again, where they put in the ginseng and they might use another eight to 10 to 12 different herbs to buffer, to cradle and help with the transportation of the nutrients. If you were to analyze any of Dr. Chin's individual herbs and you were to do a deep, deep chemical breakdown on it, you'd find there's other things there. He was accused one time of not knowing what he was doing because he didn't mix it correctly. And he grinned and he says, well, I never said that it was just ginseng. And then he would talk again about how when you have a ginseng, for example, and Korean type ginseng, a, a particular you know, ginseng, uh, not the Siberian, but the, but the Korean strain, it can be harsh on the body and can be stressful to the body, even though it can be a boost. It can, it can hurt the adrenals after a while. So the formulation that he uses, which is very similar to what the Koreans have developed for thousands of years, they used to literally make ginseng and send it back to China because they were oppressed by the Chinese. They were controlled by the Chinese for a long time. And China used to get this formulation from them. And when they broke away from China, they never actually sent the exact formula back to China, but that's essentially what Dr. Chin's using. So if you're a Chinese, a Korean ginseng connoisseur, and there are people that just love certain ginsengs, you take that capsule, open it up and taste it, and it tastes identical 
to what these people are paying 40 and $50 an ounce for in these liquids. It's That's a product that we just always undersold unless you understood the value of ginseng. My point to the story is that Dr. Chen doesn't do what other people do. He does it much better, and he makes a product you can't buy anywhere else. You may find a good Korean ginseng. That's one example. It's about the only product that I know in the entire marketplace with all the thousands of products that exist out there today on the internet and the web that has that kind of capacity that maybe somebody else is similar to. His nutrient, his assimilate, his prime again, those particular herbal formulas are incredibly unique. And they're unique because of how he made sure that they were protected so that they have a good balance to them. I remember asking him when I first got to know him, you know, Dr. Chen, I read, and I'm trying to play real stupid here, I read once that if you take too much golden seal, it could actually weaken your immune system. He goes, which golden seal are you talking about? Now, I thought I was pretty smart. You know, and I knew for a fact that Americans had the best golden seal. Then he began to list all the different types of golden seal in the plant kingdom. And he got to like number 40. And I said, okay, you made your point. Which ginseng out of these would you use? And he took out, we were flying once and he took out a napkin and he wrote the chemical breakdown of golden seal, the one he liked because it didn't have a free hanging free radical of oxygen, which is why it be, people would get an immune system build up to it. He says, ours, if you notice here, how the nitrogen and, I, and he was showing this whole thing and I'm looking at, I don't know what I'm looking at. I go, well, that makes a lot of sense to me, Dr. Chen. He goes, that's why this particular species I use because it doesn't have the ability to become um, working the body too hard and creating a, a, a buildup to it, if you will, an immune, immune um, you know what I'm trying to say, with that particular ginseng. So that kind of in-depth knowledge, you'll never hear Dr. Chen talk about much because he said it's not important. You just have to know that we do it correctly. You've heard him say that a million times. And it's kind of like he's blowing us off. Well, the couple of times I've had some really in-depth conversations with him, I did feel like I was being just buried and, and that was okay. He wasn't trying to, but I asked the question and he gave me the answer and he was right. I had no idea what he was talking about, but it developed the trust and understanding that he was able to, because of his knowledge, create products in such a way that were very safe and effective because of how he did it and didn't create some of the long-term problems, but yet brought about the results so that the body knew how to utilize it. Thus, we talk about whole foods. Thus, we talk about balance. There's another very large company in the United States that and it may also be in Canada. It's been around about, oh, I bet it's been 15 years now. Huge company. It was bought out by Nestle. It's still a very big company. And I had the opportunity to meet the owner of this company. And we actually talked for a half hour one day after his, after his program. Still my top selling uh, vitamin line in the stores today. But he and I had a conversation. And I said, uh, he said, I saw Sunrider uh, on your desk. I said, yeah. And he says, uh, Dr. Chen is a great man. I said, how do you know Dr. Chen? He goes, my mother owned a health food store and she got involved in Florida and Sunrider. And I was intrigued by hearing him talk because he brought up this idea of whole food, something we had never heard of in the vitamin business, which he's right. And in the nineties, and we talked about it. And I thought this guy's onto something that you need the whole plant. He says, so I began as I broke off on my own to find ways to do that in his limited way. He was able to create better formulations, but he never got into the concentration anywhere like Dr. Chin did. And he asked me, at the, we had a really nice meeting at the end. He says, do you have any idea how he actually does it? And I says, why? And he goes, I'd love to know. I said, I bet you would. But that's a proprietary information. That's why Dr. Chin has no one make his product for him. That's why on some of the products that are made, they're done in either two different areas or two different times. So nobody knows his formulas. Nobody knows exactly what the mixes are that go into it. Nobody knows the base he uses in the liquids. Not one person knows, but people know parts of it, except for Oilin and Tefu and Eric, and I'm sure Sonny and, and uh, uh, Ruben are aware of it, don't know the actual formulations. And that's what makes these products so unique. So today at 2023, when we're sitting here struggling getting products, we still have people after almost a year now of not having something asking when. I just spoke to an Amish fellow today, and it's really sweet because they don't talk on telephones, but when they want to know something, they'll go down to the corner and they'll pick up a phone and call me. And I always try to take their calls because you can't call them back. And he asked me, he says, when do you think we're going to have assimilate? I said, I don't know the answer to that. He goes, well, I know you're trying very hard. and Dr. Chin's a wonderful man. I'm sorry to bother you. Where the other calls I get are people screaming and yelling at me because they want it and they want it now. This man appreciates, as do many of his people and his organization and his family, that these products impact them. 
And it's not from the business standpoint, even though it has helped them. It's from what it's done to their body. So when you're talking or speaking to somebody about Sunrider, the question would always come up as, well, I've never seen these products and I don't understand these products. And why doesn't somebody else sell them? Or can't you give me more information? And that's where we always find ourselves hedging. But when you know the integrity of Dr. Chen and you know what he's done to develop to this point, for example, our concentration and, and items like Quinery, and I, I always bring that up, are greater than they were 25 years ago. He's found ways to enhance the process to get more nutrients out without destroying it. This is part of the research he's constantly working on. When they, when they, everything gets made into this liquid, it always is a process. And what Dr. Chin told me in confidence probably 10 years ago was the quality of the plants today, the amount of nutrients in the plants today, particularly those coming out of a lot of the Asian countries, are down 20% from what they were earlier. Why? Air pollution, uh, soil has been worked too hard, whatever it might be. Same problems we have in the U.S. where our nutrients in our soil is not as great. So he has to do what? He has to use 20% more raw material because he doesn't just make it so that it fits in a bottle and he's done. He does it to maintain that profile he established years ago and has always tried to increase. And in fact, we do have better concentration. We do have a more effective product than we did 25, 30 years ago. And we're pleased to say that right now, even though we're still months behind, the production level of Texas is at or exceeding in most of the areas of what it was in California because they've finally been able to hire enough people. It's taking, my gosh, almost a year to hire enough quality people that can stick with it and learn how to do it, whatever the job might be. Um, and the capsulation was probably the easiest thing for them to learn. So capsules have been coming through better. But the initial product, the taking of the raw material, the cleaning of it, the concentrating of it, the drying of it, adding quarantine all through the process, going into vats to be stored so it can be either into a capsule or powder or into another formulation. Those kind of heavy techniques have been hard to find people that can learn. They've been able to hire high level qualified people over the last six months, in particular a couple just in the last two months to learn what they need to know about this. So our production is, I'll say, ramping up. And it's going to be where we need it to be, and we haven't sacrificed one bit of quality. The equipment that they've been able to buy in California is leading um, the field in quality in terms of what we have, in terms of creating a quality product of the speed and the cost we need to do it. The detriment to all of us over the last year has been the lack of inventory. But what we don't, what we don't want to do, and I encourage people to be open about this, is to understand what Sunrider and its products stand for. From a business standpoint, if you've lost money because the product isn't there to sell, then you're hurting as bad as everybody else. And it's and if you ask Dr. Chin about it, and I did, and he put his head down and says, I'm sorry, because he is. He's destroyed by this. He's embarrassed to talk to people because they look at him and say, you've never let us down before. And he always would say to me, I just had a chopper tune to see him a couple months ago over in Texas. And he said, I'm so sorry. I says, for what? For all you did? for taking the sacrifice to come to Texas to really protect us for the future, to create a facility that can handle five times what we're doing now at our highest capacity. You can do five times as much around the world out of this facility. You're apologizing. I went around, I gave the name of four of the companies that are struggling miserably, one of them in Texas, because they cannot hire enough people to do something as simple as putting vitamins or herbs in a capsule. They can't find enough bodies because people are not willing to work. Now, we're not going to get into that whole thing, but that's a real serious issue. But he's been able to hire, because, because the simple thing of putting in a capsule is one issue, but running these high-speed filling machines and then taking it up the ladder into the quarantines, the quality control testing, the amount of biochemists that he needs to have, and the people that actually make this concentrated product to the level that he has, that he demands, those are very highly skilled people. And he's finally be able to put together the team. The Chin family is finally putting that team together. But what we all must remember is this is not a product like anybody else has. Nobody does soft gel with us. Soft gels are finally starting to come through. Those machines are very difficult to operate. Once you turn a soft gel machine on and you turn it off, it takes 24 hours to clean it. So they try to run enough soft gel in a row to keep going. That's why nobody in the vitamin industry makes their own soft gel product. They buy it from three major pharmaceutical companies because that's what they do. Chin says, no, we'll make our own. I don't want anybody to know what goes into Energy Plus or how we do it. I don't want anybody to look at what we do and how we formulate our men's formula. So we're gonna do our own. 
and he's invested a ton of money into it, which at some point in the future, I know will no longer be an animal-based product, but it'll be a vegetarian product because that's one of his goals. And that's something very hard to accomplish in a soft gel. Did it in the, the two-part capsule years ago, but not in soft gel. He is not going to stop till he gets everything exactly the way he wants it. So we have product coming out that he can't have somebody else do. That's the negative behind what we're doing. Other companies, when like, for example, they have a fire in their facility, they can hire somebody else in about three months, that company can produce what they had. Nobody can produce what we do. And the fact that we are up and ready to go, but finally have the personnel doing it, we're looking at maybe three or four months till we see all of our products, maybe five. Why? Because Dr. Chin doesn't grind an herb, throw it in a capsule, stick it in a bag and send it to you. The number of steps that it goes through from the original identification, for example, when he gets a plant product, some plant that comes out of somewhere in the Far East, it first has to go through Singapore and be identified through all the gas chromatography to identify that, that they all look alike. Have you ever seen, if you'd have seen his bags of all of his herbs up there, his burlap sacks in a warehouse, they all look the same. If you open them up, they all look like something dry, green, and brown. Who would know? The gas chromatography studies identify this as this plant of this species, exactly what he wants. So when it gets identified in Singapore, it gets cleaned effectively so it never has to be fumigated or radiated. All other plants coming to this country have to have that done by the FDA standards. Ours never have an issue coming in because of the, the detail it goes through to get us the highest quality ingredient to be as chemical free as it can be. There's enough chemicals in the air right now that mess up plants that he doesn't want to add to it. So when you when you buy it from the farmer, he contracts with farmers three years ahead. When he gets it from the farmers, wherever it might be, and if it is in that part of the world, it goes to Singapore to go through all that testing and studying, and, you know, months of process, gets on a boat, comes to America, it's quarantined again. And then it's studied here again for the gas chromatography to make sure it's what the bag says it is. Then it gets stored to be used in production quarantined again to make sure nothing happened to it from the time it left the rack to the time it goes in the formula. Once this formula is concentrated, it goes into quarantine again so that the batch can be tested to make sure there's no traces of anything, let alone any bacteria. He wants to make sure that some harmful chemical didn't seep in. You could write down on your sheet of paper right now the number of times you've ever had a product recall from Sunrider. And I can tell you that I don't have a product in my store that company hasn't had some kind of recall over the last 30 years. Why? the detail he puts into making the best product he can. So from the time that product gets ready to be concentrated, is concentrated, quarantine again, that's why they have such a huge laboratory at Sunrider facilities. Then it comes out and it gets packaged and it's quarantined again to make sure that that finished product didn't develop something. And it is what it says it is. Then it gets packaged and it gets sent to California to be shipped, which only costs us about three days. People think it's costing us weeks. It's not. You're looking at about, from the time they schedule the production, I mean, actually get it going with the concentration of finishes, 10, 11 weeks. That's four months, three months. We'll use three months because it sounds better. So if he were to start something today, it's July, August, September. October. We're talking mid-October before you're going to see it. So it isn't a matter of he calls on a phone and says, give me 22 of these. All of the countries around the world, you know, Americans think we're the only ones that get it. We had to start sharing with Canada a number of years ago. And okay, we're getting over that now. And, and I think our negative attitude, that's why Canada got the new webpage for America did. But that's OK. We're getting over that. We'll get you some other way. Excuse me. I know you're, most of you are Canadians. But um, when, when he looks at all of these things around the world, they normally have a seven-month lead time. From the time they order the product, somebody says in, in a country, I need new plus uh, mixed berry. By the time they place that order, till it gets into scheduling, to gets into production, to gets on a boat, gets to their country, Three months or yeah, three months of production, a month of scheduling, a month on a boat. They have to have a seven month inventory in all these countries. So a lot of the European countries and Asian countries didn't run out of inventory as quickly as we did because we were only carrying a two to three month inventory for obvious reasons. Well, now because of that, everything we're making, we're making for the entire world. When he makes a batch of Kelly, he's making Kelly for everybody. And we're talking millions of bags. And they do that because their effort is to try to get that pipeline filled so that we don't run into this out of stock. So when you're talking about giving a country a seven-month worth of inventory, you can imagine how long it time takes to make that. And that's why they're still behind. That's why they they stopped doing back orders. They've been filling back orders. We have more product coming in this week that'll fill, I think, 
one of the Fortune's light flavors is going to get filled and they're still going to be a little short, but they have another batch coming two weeks later. Then eventually that one will never go into back order again because of how they've changed the principles by which they're doing this. They hired a new man that's in charge of, I don't want to say distribution, but that's kind of what he does. He sort of decides what goes into production when and takes care of that specific detail to Texas plant. He came out of another large company, very, very highly regarded. And, you know, headhunter went after him and got him. So we've got somebody really qualified, but it's five months till we begin to see the effects of that. So we will see the positive nature come from this, but know that nobody else in the world in this industry, whether it be network marketing, retail, internet, has what we have. And we have to respect that element of it. And we want to keep people focused on that because this whole thing that we talk about with Whole Foods, everybody's talking Whole Foods these days. They talk about individual uh, nutrients or isolates aren't any good. They're talking about formulations that have to go with vitamins. All these companies are talking about that today. They're all talking about how the body then utilizes the, the it more effectively and absorbs better for them. It's the terminology that, that we started that everybody's using because it's correct. The difference is that nobody's able to create the products we do. They get four different vitamins and throw it in a bottle and think they've created some magic. They grind up some herbs together and say that they've created what they've created. Nobody's been able to create, has the knowledge to create what we have. So I think it's really important that all of us just stay as focused as we can on this, on this stuff that's going on. Because this move into Texas, as harmful as it's been and as difficult as it's been, Bad timing because of COVID. COVID just messed up everything in terms of product flow, bottles, labels, caps, people. Uh, the building got held up because they couldn't get some basic steel. They couldn't get glass. All kinds of things that a lot of people are aware of that happened during COVID. Our timing probably couldn't have been any worse. They hired probably one of the top pharmaceutically rated companies to move equipment because, you know, pharmaceutical companies move stuff. They hired the best company they could find to tear the equipment down and move it. Should have been flawless total disaster because that company hired some people that were not qualified because they had so much work that put us back probably three months of getting certain machines set up so there's a lot of things that happened and it'd be hard to say it was your fault your fault or your fault it was um, a disaster and that's what bothers dr chin the most about it and i've heard some people say well does dr chin know what's going on really if you know Dr. Chen, you know he's got, he knows what's going on before anybody else does. He's in on their Monday meetings where uh, Ruben and Sonny and Eric and the other seven top management people are in the meetings. He's well aware of what's going on. And he does everything within his power to complain, an advocate for us. But uh, he does have some very highly qualified people that can accomplish what we're doing because he constantly says, and Eric is the one that oversees everything in production, that they will not change what we do because we don't have the product. They're not gonna cut quality. They're not gonna cut back on what they do just to put some product in the field because Dr. Chin knows that the product we have is the reason that we're still in business because people know the results. A lot of people I know have gone out and tried to buy other products. They think, well, I'm trying this because I couldn't get New Plus. Go for it. There's nothing on the market like New Plus. I'm sorry. We may have some stuff like Sun Trimmer. We may have some products like some of our weight loss stuff. We maybe like some of those, even though I think ours are much better. But nobody has the basic products that we have. Nobody has some of the basic skincare products that we have. The kind of work that Dr. Chin put into that is unbelievable. And I think that uh, as all of us move forward and going down this road, as we try to keep people as happy as we can, all I can say is that if you can respect what Dr. Chin has set as a foundation, he hasn't deviated from that. And for those of you that have not had the opportunity or haven't been with Sun or Ratter long enough to hear some of his conversations or some of his talks, you've missed something in life that I feel very blessed that I was a part of, that I got to hear him talk about things. He talks about, I don't care if it's philosophy or politics or whatever it is, the man is very well read, but his knowledge is critical, but his concern and passion for people exceed all of that. Things that go on in the world bug the daylights out of him because he cares about everybody. So I don't want to get into a lot of individual products. I just think it's important for us to understand that when you look at the products that we do have with Sunrider, there is nothing else like it. So when we get the rest of the soft gels out and they finally get all the encapsulated products going, because we're in desperate need of assimilate, Canada probably has it, but U.S. doesn't, um, and we get enough Kelly going, everybody's going to be happy. And we've just got to keep everybody as focused on 
the understanding that there is no substitute for the majority of our basic products. There may be a substitute for, I don't know, maybe shampoo, but not even our toothpaste. I'm trying to think of the things we could say would be as good. It, I can't find it. I can't find anything in the encapsulated program, the soft gel program, you know, Bella, um, Top Joyees, Top Focus, any Meta Booster, I think is going to be coming out again in a couple of weeks. Those kind of products don't really exist. Uh, I don't know what Canada has, so I shouldn't say, but the the ability that Dr. Chen always had, because he was one that always said, I'm not going to come up with just vitamin C because everybody has vitamin C. And he's right, because if we had just vitamin C, they'd have bought it somewhere else and they'd never come back. Dr. Chen was one of the first people to ever, that I've ever seen commercially using the sodium form of vitamin C. Well, if you ever studied chemistry, you would know that ascorbic acid does not absorb through the through the cellular wall effectively. It needs to have a mineral base to it. And sodium ascorbate is the most effective way to go. Having bioflavonoids with it also makes it more effective. But Dr. Chin takes his bioflavonoids from the fruits. So his detail on the product makes us more than just vitamin C. Uh, his blending of the calcium makes it more than just calcium. Nobody ever blended calcium 30 years ago. He started blending it. Three or four different sources to be able to help the absorption. His detail to those kind of things go unnoticed by the common person who buys a vitamin or an herb or a skincare product. So when you talk to people about Sunrider and they've tried the product, which is what they have to do, and they enjoy the results, then it's okay to get into the little bit of the weeds, not in detail, but why this product is so unique. The care and effort that goes into making the product, it's not a guess. It's not a throw a scoop of this and a scoop of this. It all ends up being that there's a certain amount of a certain nutrient that he says has to be there and, and chemically he'd be correct but that only happens through intense work on the formulation process which can be done in our facilities and nowhere else so we can't just go have somebody else do our packaging for us or our filling for us that's our biggest problem but it's our biggest strength and i can only ask for people to stay in there because you're not going to find another group of people like the chin family that's going to work any harder what we do now, I'm as frustrated and as angry over some of the stuff that's not been coming out, um, but I always go back and look at, you know, my history, my heritage, the long time that I've known the Chins and I've known the family to say, you know what, there's something real here because most of these companies aren't real. All the vitamin people I knew back when I started in the 70s, they've all sold up, quit or died. But nobody's in the business anymore that used to be. Um, Paul Bragg and Bragg Products is now the family, which are good people, don't get me wrong. And, and Dr. Bonner and all those people uh, broader products are all family now and they're good, but everybody else is sold out to some corporation, everything else. That's not Chin. Chin's family is here to make it work for us. Um, wow, that was a long introduction. I'm almost out of time. So um, Cheryl, do you want, do you want to, let me, uh, there's a chat button here and I never do chat things. So does anybody, do you want to open it up for a couple of questions? We have about uh, 10, 12 minutes left. Oh, Don, that was, that was just Fantastic. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait now to share the recording. Um, yeah, we could open it up for, for a couple of questions if anybody has any. You covered so much. Maybe nobody, <laughs> anybody out there want to? See, look oh, at her. She's got the old sun care. Yes, she does. The clay powder that came with the, with the and it still smells amazing. Like, yeah. like and this is like very, very old. <laughs> I was one of Dr. Chin's most brilliant marketing moves he ever had. I just had it on my desk. Where did I put it? I'm getting ready to move and I put all of my, found different things and I've been putting them out so I wouldn't lose them. I put that one in my drawer here somewhere. Anyways, uh, yeah, great product, great stories. Mac? Anybody else have anything they want? Oh, there's Mac. Yeah, hey, Mac? I'm not, so much, not so much a question, but Don, I can't thank you enough. I mean, what a wonderful historical perspective and reminders that you've just given us about all the things that have made Sunrider so special for so many of us for so many years. Um, can't thank you enough for that little trip down memory lane and a lot of things. And, you know, like you, Don, I have felt um, blessed for so many years being able to travel. And you and I have had the opportunity to travel with Dr. Chin together even. So, you know, I remember some of those trips and, and again, just being around that man and, and being able to um, just talk to him and listen to him speak. Like you said, on so many different topics, he's just fun to kind of pick his brain and 
get them started on something. And man, you, you, you know, you just want it more and more. So thank you so much for all of this. Really, really good information and uh, things I think we all needed to hear. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Mac, for being on. I, I'm a firm believer as I get older, and I'm probably older than everybody on this call, that legacy is critical. If you don't know from whence you came, you probably don't know where you're going. And if people lose sight of what who Chin was back in the 70s and 80s and 90s and how the kids came into the business in 2000, I think we lose a lot of the, the, the real value to what this is. Because I think in our country and probably the world, the old new is better doesn't work. I think legacy tells us what we're based upon. And is there a real philosophy and a principle? I remember once I was sitting with Mrs. Chen at her house and we were just killing time waiting to go somewhere. I can't remember what it was. And I and the kids were young. And I says, so are you hopeful that all the children are coming to business? And she says, if they're properly educated, I says, so what would you like them to study? And she goes, either medicine or law. I go, okay, can you use that many doctors or lawyers? She goes, no, I don't care what they do. But either one of those degrees require you to think under pressure. Lawyers know how to debate. That's why nobody likes them. They take both sides. But when I went to my internship, when she went from uh, Utah to Pittsburgh, and that's kind of how I got to know Chin because I lived in Ohio, and Chin would come back and do a week's worth of meetings. The reality was there was one meeting, four nights with his wife, but I covered for him. And she was there in an internship with her English being really bad in a inner city Pittsburgh hospital. She said, I got there at 10, I was on the floor at 11, and I had four fatal industries within an hour. I had to make life decisions right there. And I've learned that in medicine, if you make a decision, it's life or death. And she goes, I want my children to be able to deal with that kind of life. Then if they want to come to work for us, they'll be prepared to make decisions because business is about proper decisions. And I thought, wow, how intuitive to be able to allow your kids to do what they want to do, but know that they have to have the discipline. And uh, she's also a very special person when it comes to that. She, a lot of people don't know her as well because she's very respectful to Dr. Chen. He's always get the final word. Unless you speak Chinese, then you know she has her opinion. Um, you know, usually when she says something and he puts his head down and stops, she knows when it's time to shut up. And those of you that have been on the board and listened to some of those, they were always fun to watch because she knew how to be respectful, but she knew when to tell them enough's enough. So that's why I always said she's the boss, but they have a tremendous relationship. She's a brilliant woman. Um, I think we're in great hands with Sunny. Sunny is so much like her mother, it's scary. And her ability to make Firm, hard decisions with a straight face. You know, Elinda probably didn't smile for the first 15 years. And her ability to, to do run this company, I think, is encouraging. And I was very happy to see last year in Texas at our convention where Sunny was up on stage with her management team there. And you could see how she's um, just on top of everything. So anyways, Mac, thanks. Thanks for being on. Hey, Barb. Yeah, I, I was just going to mention, too, about Dr. Chen. So three months after I started in Sunrider, Dr. Chen came to Regina and we drove to hear him. And that for me was when I realized this was the real deal. It was, you know, he was humble. He was so knowledgeable and just, I don't know, it was something about him that I just knew that, you know, this guy was for real. And that's 34 years ago. So well, I, I, I uh, had the opportunity to watch people's faces, hear him speak all around. I, I was, I've been in Regina, I think once I was in Saskatoon once for sure, Vancouver a couple of times. I hit a number of the Canadian cities that are hops across the top of the country. Dr. Chin gave me that opportunity and I really enjoyed it, but you can't ever replace what he does and what he says, because I can only relate stories and things I know about him. I can't ever do what he does or express it the way he does. He's just, he's brilliant at his language skills, even though it's a little rough and his jokes are horrible and he knows it. he just does it to to have fun and make Mrs. Chin mad. So don't think he doesn't know his jokes aren't funny. Just so you all know, it's a little inside information. I have a story too. Um, uh -huh. When when my uh, my nephew had a very serious health challenge and I had the opportunity to have uh, lunch or dinner, I can't remember, at one of the events with Dr. Chen and I was just asking him for some advice. And, and he said, um, when you go on the tour, I'll meet you there. I have something for you. And he gave me five bottles of Meta Booster to give to Isaac. And, you know, that just showed me he's not only like a wise um, expert in herbs and everything, but such a good heart and, mm -hmm. you know, always caring about, about us as a family. 
He mm-hmm. treats us like we're his kids, his family. If you know? remember back far enough when he was having some legal issues with his sister, he had made a comment at one of the conventions. He says, you know, there's nobody from my my blood family here. You're all my family. Mm-hmm. And it broke everybody's heart because here's a guy up there crying because nobody in his family would talk to him because they were told he was evil. And I could tell you stories about all of that kind of stuff. And none of that was true whatsoever. The things that that he never shut his family out. When his father died, he had to find out from a cousin in Taiwan about three months after his dad died that he had died because nobody would tell him. And that hurt him because he was still his father. And he had to pay a private detective to find where he was buried in Utah. I mean, those kind of things in a family just tear at you. And you realize the kind of stuff he's been through but he just forges ahead. So he's been through his own trials and tribulations and uh, appreciates our support. I know he appreciates everybody of how they've hung in there with him and he wish he could do more. I mean, I'm just giving you that message from him because it's true. And uh, he wishes he could reach out more to everybody so they would understand him. But like you, Cheryl and, and Mac talking up there that um, everybody knows the kind of real man he is and, and the difference it makes. And we love him and we love you too, Don. Thank you so much for- well, being here with us. Thanks for the opportunity. I've, I've had a couple different calls with people and it's been a lot of fun to sit there and, and talk to everyone and keep giving everybody the direction and hope. And I'm always willing to do that for anybody at any time. So if you need anything like that, don't hesitate to ask. So good luck to everyone out there. Keep forging forward. Um, by Christmas, I'm feeling we're going to be in much better shape. We'll still have a little ways to go, but the pain will be much better by then. And we'll look forward to a strong next year. And I know the regionals are coming around, so they're coming mm-hmm. into some of your areas. Uh, do the best job you can of attending those. They're going to be great. And uh, by then, everything will continue to improve. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks to everybody for being on. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.